So hello everyone. Uh, so I'm Alice and uh, I'm going to talk to you about Tensor today. And I'm not kidding. So uh, before I start, uh, I'd like to to say a couple of things. Uh, this won't be a technical talk. Uh, it, will more, it will be more like uh, a story. Uh, a story that I'm going to tell you, and obviously a story about Tensor. Uh, what I'm going to try to do here is a little bit tough because I, I'm going to try to summarize six years of development in 40 minutes. So I'm not sure I managed to do that, but I try anyway. And I apologize in advance if you are a contributor to Dancer and you are not mentioned in this talk. Uh, 40 minutes is a very short time for mentioning six years of development. So let's start by uh, introducing myself. So my name is Alexis Ukiye. I work uh, at WebRama, so this is going to be my corporate slide. Uh, a couple of seconds about that. At WebRama, we work in uh, digital marketing. That's the nice word for advertising stuff. Uh, and basically, we provide lots of tools to our customers to uh, better understand what they do and uh, the audience they have and to enhance their advertising campaigns. On the technical side, it's really challenging and exciting because the platform we have involves more than 1 billion of HTTP requests per day. So we have real scalability uh, concerns and it's quite interesting. And we use lots of Perl here. And uh, we are hiring also, so if you're interested, uh, you can have a chat with me uh, later on today. So that's it for our uh, corporate slide. Uh, online, I'm uh, better known as Sukriya. Uh, that's the nickname I use uh, almost everywhere, that's my Twitter nickname. Uh, my GitHub also nickname, and my blog uh, is another superior.net uh, domain. And I'd like to say that uh, I have nothing to do with this. So <laughs> I don't know if you've already seen that. Ah, I don't see that. Okay. <laughs> this is not me, okay? <laughs> okay, so let's, let's read up. Nothing to do with me. So, uh, back to what I, want, I wanted to say. Uh, I'd like to, to speak a little bit about open source and uh, how I came into open source because it's really related to Dancer in the end. Uh, I always love to get involved in open source projects since I was able to write functional code. Uh, I was really interested in the open source ecosystem because I think that's the best way to learn things is to contribute to a project where the only thing that matters is the code itself. There is no financial pressure, there is no time pressure. It can be, but in the very beginning when you start to contribute to something, you just try to solve a problem. And the only challenge you have is the intellectual challenge. And also, by contributing to open source project, you will get experts' advices from other hackers, and that's a very, very good way uh, to learn things. So, I was involved uh, in some uh, open source project. The most important one at the beginning for me was Debian, the Debian ecosystem. I used to be a Debian developer, and uh, it really teached me a lot of things because they have very strict policies, and uh, it, it was pretty interesting. But at some point, I stopped, uh, I resigned from Debian because it, it was really too demanding. And uh, I also created a little tool called Backup Manager. Maybe you know it. It's package in Debian Ubuntu, it's a very simple tool uh, where you create a conf file and you can handle lots of uh, backup in many ways. And obviously I also started to contribute to Perl. My first tip and upload was in 2006. It was not a really very interesting module, but uh, that was the first one I uploaded. And I also did a Perl console which was really inspired by IRB in the Ruby ecosystem. It's a read, edit, read, loop program, and that's very useful for beginners. Uh, you can interpret code uh, interactively. I have all the pet modules, and uh, as you can imagine, uh, there is one that I'm going to talk about today. It's Dancer. It was released six years ago already. So let's focus on Dancer. Uh, so you already uh, spoke about that yesterday, uh, the popularity stats. I agree with him. Uh, it's maybe it's maybe not the best metrics, but it can be interesting to look at uh, the focus we have on GitHub as a core project. It's quite good. I agree also with uh, Sawyer that pull requests and issues 
are even more important than stars themselves, and we have a lot. Uh, and uh, I think it's quite interesting and also uh, interesting to, to look into contributing to the project and to see that we do all we can to welcome people contributing to the project. More importantly, the number of authors you can find in the project. If you look at the number of different people who are the author of a commit, either in Delta 1 or Delta 2, you will find more than 200 people. And I think that's quite uh, impressive for a core project. If you look at the plugins now, if, you, if we speak about the ecosystem, if you look at all the plugins for Dancer 1 or Dancer 2, it's more than 250 plugins on CPAN. And that's a very good sign of vitality of the project. It means that there are lots of people interested into making the project alive. 100 of users on IRC every day, I agree, sometimes they don't speak, but they are here. So, uh, if someone asks a question, most of the time there is a very good chance that uh, that people, uh, that person will have an answer. Another interesting thing to look at is the, the result on Google when you type per web framework. We are third, just under Catalyst and Mojo issues. That's fair enough. <laughs> and we have an annual conference. And then we'll come from us. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Uh, it's really, really weird for me to be speaking at Google France <laughs> of a project. <laughs> it almost started as a blog post ID six years ago. And uh, I'm really uh, excited to be there. And I'd like to take a moment to, to really warmly uh, thank all the organizers of this event, uh, like Sis uh, Pete and Sam. And I think we can <laughs> It's a really great initiative and I'm really happy to be here. So, the main question is, how did we get there? How did we get from a blog post ID, a proof of concept, to six years later, a project that deserves an annual conference? That's the question I asked myself when I was trying to prepare something to say today. And uh, the truth is, I absolutely have no fucking idea. <laughs> why this worked. I really don't. But what I suggest is that uh, maybe we can try to look back at the creation of the project, try to see what was good and what was maybe not good, and try to draw some learnings out of that. So, let me tell you a story of code and hackers. And for a good story, we need a good plan of the storyline. We need a, a beginning, a genesis, uh, to set everything in place. We also need some passion and warfare, some moment of flame, action, you know, like in a good Hollywood movie. We need that, and we will have that, I think. And of course, you cannot build a good movie if you don't have good characters, heroes, who build a story. <laughs> and every good story, they have a reboot, right? Like all the good movies, a good story needs to be rebooted at some point. And then, at the very end, you need some kind of morale, some kind of learning uh, that we will try to have. So let's start with the early days, uh, where everything started, the genesis of Dancer. Everything begins in 2009, in the summer, and I work in a startup company named Ulic. So it has been named by French people. We, we thought it was pronounced Ulic, but all the English-speaking speak, people told me that would be pronounced Yolik. So, okay, that's the French touch. Anyway, we were building uh, social network solutions for enterprises, and we were doing that with Ruby on Rails. So, at that time, Ruby on Rails uh, was super hype. Uh, I know that it's still used, so that, <laughs> that's good. But at that time, it was used mostly for blogs, and we tried to build something else with it, but anyway, I was focused on my uh, daily job on the Ruby ecosystem, and I was using it at work while I was contributing to Perl on my personal plan. And I came across Sinatra uh, at that time. And when I saw that, I was really amazed by the elegance of that design. 
you need to remember that uh, six years ago, when you were speaking about web development, everyone was saying MVC, Model View Controller. It was everywhere. You had uh, Rails for Ruby, of course, you had Django uh, for Python, Catalyst in Core, uh, Module Issues and Symfony, or then in PHP. Everywhere, if you wanted to do it, go MVC. And then, Sinatra arrived. And basically, when you look at that, it's the very simpler way to declare a web application. And I really love that. Basically, what I was looking at was a web programming language. I mean, a set of keywords designed exactly to describe a web application. Actually, it has a name. It's called a DSL, a domain-specific language, where in our case, the domain is the web application. And Sinatra was a DSL for web development. But what about Perl? Did a DSL for web development at Perl exist at that time? If not, could we write one? And we were that we were in July 2009. So let's take a look at what was possible at that time for writing a web application with Perl. The first way to go was CGI. And uh, I, I don't know if you saw the light you talk about Sorry, no, but why you should not use CGI, but he said something very funny, which is true. The CGI is so old, it was invented before the internet. <laughs> <laughs> so yeah, that, that was CGI. It could be uh, an option at that time. There was also Modcore, because you know, mixing application logic and server-side settings together was fun at the time. And there was HTML method. Can you raise your hand if you know what is HTML Mason? Okay. <laughs> How to describe Mason? Uh, imagine you mix PHP concepts uh, about embedding, embedding code within uh, HTML template with Perl syntax, object-oriented programming, and you put MVC on top of that. That's basically what you get with Mason. Syntax. <laughs> anyway, uh, you also had, of course, Catalyst. The, the way to go for MVC in Perl, which was uh, an MVC uh, Cpanish, uh, if I could say, and module issues, which was an MVC module. So there was more than one way to do it. There was more than, more than one way to do web development, but we lacked the way. There wasn't a DSL for doing that. So in summer 2009, that's the conclusion. Uh, I saw. And here came the first release of Dancer. Dancer 0.099, the 27th of July. And as you can see, if you, if you look at that release, you will see in the readme that in this very first release, the, the target was to port Sinatra. And later on, we removed that, we took our freedom uh, for the inspiration. Let's look, let, take a look at, uh, at that first release. The DSL in that first release contained 21 keywords only. But if you look closely, it's more 18 keywords because false, true, and up, I don't really know what I had in mind to add those in the DSL. But anyway, you have only 18 keywords, the very, very basics of what that's are as you can see. A month later of that release, the first website is online. So as you can tell, I'm not a very good web designer. But the website was online. And that was a good thing, I think. That was a good thing to promote the project. We will speak, I think, a little bit more about the marketing in the end. But there was some initiative like that. And later on, two years later, uh, a friend of mine who is a web designer did this uh, web design. And by the way, uh, I have a little news. Thanks to the discussion we had yesterday about the marketing, I asked him if he was willing to work with us on a new version of the website and on marketing, communications, uh, and so on. And he agreed, he's very motivated. So I think we will have a new website uh, in the coming months or weeks, we will see. So that's quite, that's quite good. And to conclude with the introduction, so the first release of the service was published, the website was there. There was something from the very beginning that is still true today, and I think, I truly believe it's it's the key to why Dancer is so simple to use and so fun. 
That's this DSL methodology. The fact that we don't have a dollar self to shift in the end user code. And you need to see that when we published the first release of Dancer and the Perl ecosystem, it was really shocking. Because the Perl way to go is to shift self anytime. And for us, it's a really challenge because when you don't shift self but you have objects underneath, it's quite difficult. And I think the, the, the big challenge with the plugin design is mainly because of that. But it really provides a very uh, easy to use interface for the end developer because you don't have administrative code. You just focus on what you want to do. You don't have to shift anything. You create yourself and, and you write the code you want. And that's still true today, and I think that's the, the core, that's the soul of that size. So yeah, that led to a dancer spirit, which is really simple and fun. But not everyone liked that when it was published. And that comes to the part where we have a little bit of action. <laughs> so, a few words about IDs, the concept of IDs. I think IDs are like leading entities. Uh, once you have one of them and you share it, it will either leave or, or it will die, but it's gonna be really gonna spread. And it's even more true on the internet, where ideas can spread mostly at the speed of thought. And basically writing a DSL for web development in Perl was an idea after all. And then came module issues light. Uh, almost at the same time uh, that song was released, uh, module issues light was released as well. And it's a, actually, if you don't know it, it's a Sinatra light DSL layer that is on top of module issues, the module issues framework. And everything started with a comment posted on use.pearl.org that acknowledged that, and I quote, they saw that on CPAN and implemented it with module. So, back in the time, I was deeply involved in my project, and I really loved the idea of that song. And it happened so fast, almost two days maybe after the upload or something like that, that I really got pissed off. Uh, now, now I can say that when I look back, I was stupid. But you know, it's uh, ego's confusion and the internet, and you know when you get to, uh, what you get when you mix all that, you get trolls. And uh, yes, there, there were trolls uh, everywhere uh, around uh, module issues and dancer at that time. We really polluted the Perl ecosystem with trolls. So don't thank me for that. And I know it was really stupid, but it was done, it was started, and it was uh, almost impossible to stop. It, it's really funny to look at the point where it, it was. Those are fake CPAN ratings on the Dancer project. And take the time to read one of them. This framework is an insult to everyone contributing to Sinatra. It couldn't be further from the real deal. May I suggest to remove the reference from your documentation? We are on the wrong For fucking line of codes, I'm on the radar and I'm going to kill me. <laughs> so really, it's really stupid. And the thing you, you cannot uh, see here is the name of the guy that I used are actually name of Sinatra developers. And of course they are not the real guy. And Sinatra didn't like that. And this is the result. They posted a blog post on the official blog of Sinatra, mentioning the whole story that it was completely stupid, it is not related with Sinatra at all, and Sinatra loves Dancer, and if you are a top developer wanting to do web development, please take a look at Dancer. That's the end result of the whole silliness of troll. And uh, after all, a, a very good troll is a very good PR. That's the only lesson for the action part. So now, let's focus on the community. Uh, I really liked uh, uh, what Russell told uh, this morning about the fact that Tensor is more about the community uh, and it's really, really true, I think. That's also something I'm going to say. And I'd like to focus on the first people who contributed to the project who helped create it. The very first one who contributed to Tensor was me, I, I hope I, I think that most of you know him, he's a great power hacker. And almost at the same time that was released, Miyagawa started 
a, an impressive work about PSGI and plaque. He saw WSGI in the Python ecosystem, which, which is a, a way to decouple the web uh, app and the web server. And he, he wrote a spec, PSGI, and the implementation in Perl, plaque. But he didn't stop there. Once he had that, he released it, and he went to each web framework of Perl and he sent a request to add support for plaque. And Delsa was one of them, and I received pull requests from Miyagawa to add support of PSGI. That's basically when Delsa became a PSGI application. And from that point, basically, running Delsa was possible virtually anywhere. And then come that guy. You know him, no? Mm -hmm. <laughs> so, yeah, so in February 2010, he, he discovered the Delsa and he tried to write a, a web application with it. He was happy with that, but he wanted to deploy it. And his deployment solution was based on CGI. And uh, he didn't see how to do that, so he wrote a blog post on blog.org saying that, well, it's really cool, but I cannot deploy because I'm under CGI. And at that time, I was really focused on that server because it was just a, a tiny baby, so I, I was really uh, following what was said about that. I saw this blog post and I was very happy because just before, that guy gave me a solution. <laughs> so I replied uh, to that, uh, to that server, you know, <laughs> to Sawyer, uh, with a couple of lines of code to add a CGI plaque adapter. And then uh, I think he was really pleased by that, and uh, that's maybe one of the reasons that he's here today, six years later. And I'd like also to take some time uh, to thank Sawyer for all the contribution he has made to the project and the main people. And I think he deserves it. Shortly later, Frank also joined the project. Uh, he contributed a lot to many things in the code, uh, fixing bugs, enhancing the documentation, providing a better test suite, and he also introduced the Advent Calendar, which became a very good marketing action as well. And uh, it's, it's also a very good way for us to demo Dancer, because the Advent Calendar, of course, is a Dancer application. It's quite interesting to look at it because there is not a database involved. It's only pod documents that are passed and rendered as articles. And it ran for, I think, three consecutive years, and we have almost 80 articles here, so it's also a very good source of documentation. And I hope this year we will manage to, to do one. And again, if you want to help us 24 articles in one month, it's quite a challenge. And let's try to not make this guy do it. So yeah. uh, we also had uh, Dax who contributed to the project a little bit later that year. As you can see, in 2010, many people jumped. And uh, Dax worked a lot uh, on code cleaning. He also worked in the very first implementation of the plugin architecture in Dancer 1. And he also wrote some interesting plugins. The one uh, I like uh, is Dancer Flash Message, which is inspired by the Flash keyword in Ruby on right? And at some point, a little bit later, the core team spirit arrived. And when I look back, I realized that was the first day in 2011. That was actually the first day that we met Sawyer away from keyboard, because Dance, Frank and I were living in Paris, so it was easy for us to meet. But uh, we spent here almost the whole weekend, uh, the four of us, chatting, discussing, uh, discussing about the code, about the bug triage, as you mentioned that time. And uh, we started speaking about how to better handle issues and pull requests, and uh, clearly uh, the core team was created that day. And by the way, that's from computer, so it's a virtual picture of the forest. But I managed to find a real picture of the forest that time, and this is basically the first core team. And uh, if you look in the history, the bit history, you can find the very first mention of the core team. Uh, in May 2011, in the author's file. And during that time, we also discussed how to work with GitHub, and uh, we moved uh, at that time the project uh, on, a, on a GitHub organization, and we, uh, we set up a process 
to, uh, to handle issues with the coral. If at least two people who are okay with that, then we could do it. We have also Dead Precious, uh, Big Fresh online, who help a lot for the maintenance of the website, the mailing list, uh, the hosting facilities, and he's now uh, maintaining Dead around in the frozen state. And Yannick also uh, contributed a lot and uh, helped uh, uh, to maintain uh, Tensor 1 when Sawyer moved to Tensor 2. But I did not mention that, so that's the reboot part of the story. So basically, there was some major issues in Tensor 1 that I wanted to solve. The first one was the globals. It seems like globals are always coming hurting you. No matter what you end up by using them anyway. So, we really wanted to get rid of the singletons in uh, Dancer 1, and doing so iteratively was very, very hard because it's really the foundation of the code. So, it was one of the reasons to start over. It was to start over with a design where you don't have any problems. And also, Dancer 1 doesn't really have a consistent core API under this DSL, and we wanted that. We wanted that because we believe would be better for plugins and for extensing the code. So basically, I started working on Dancer 2 in August 2011, and uh, the target was no goals, and we decided to use Moo as the object oriented framework uh, for the whole core. And also, we tried, to, we tried to use that opportunity to try the better scoping. In Dancer 2, when you do something in a package, it's scoped very, very nicely which is not the case in Dancer 1 because of single points. But what about Dancer 1? If I was uh, working on Dancer 2, on complete rewrite, it was going to focus a lot. But it was not a problem because there was a core team, and Sawyer who took a lot of responsibility on Dancer 1. So while the core team was focusing on Dancer 1, I was focusing on Dancer 2 as a prototype. I, I got some help uh, from Matt on about the design. He gave me advices and his views, and it started like that. It was like a, a brain marathon that lasted really long. It was a little bit difficult because uh, I was in the shadow on that prototype, which took a lot of time to create and which was not finished. And at some point, after almost two years of development on that prototype, it was possible to run a web application with it, but it was clearly in a very early stage. My paid work became more and more demanding, and then I, I stepped away uh, from the project. And he came again. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, so I worked a lot on that, so too. Uh, basically, uh, maybe I will say something wrong, I don't know if it's correctly, but we went the config engine, I think, the hooks, the request and response objects, the context, and the app ecosystem is revamped as well. You had it as support. <laughs> Uh, so it's really, uh, really awesome. <laughs> and uh, if we look now at uh, what is uh, Delta, we have Delta on Frozen. So we are told that uh, yesterday, so it's only security fixes. And Delta 2 is at full speed now. I think that's also something we need to say again and again. Delta 2, Delta 2, everywhere. I think we will try to work on the marketing side for that. Also. And yes, we push the maintainer of, of uh, D1. To conclude that, I'm a little bit late. I hope it's okay if uh, I need a couple of minutes just for the conclusion, for the learnings. What, what could we uh, learn from that? Uh, could we draw some uh, learnings for, for all we say? I, I see five learnings. The first one, if you want to run an open source project with a little bit of success, you first need to fill a gap. If you look back, Dancer was filling a gap. It was providing a DSL for writing a web application, and there was none. So define clearly the problem, uh, and try, try to see if your solution is a new approach. The second learning is stick to your vision. Listen to others, but stick to your vision. Stick to the, the core idea of why you provided that to the community. For Dancer, uh, it's the fact that there is no self. We need to stick to that. That's the root cause of the success of Dancer, I think, among others. But the technical success comes from that. 
So it's perfectly normal that some people will disagree with you. That's normal, that's life. We are different in the world, there are different views, and it's perfectly okay. But stick to what you believe is good in your solution. That's really important. Otherwise, don't know the shit. The, the self learning. Because it's not enough. Again, it's marketing. Uh, open source is about getting attention. Attention. Attention from users, from developers, and from the community. Because if you want your process to succeed, you need not to be alone. And I think that's a good example of that because nowadays I, I mostly don't work on dance and everything is happening like if it's a living entity. So it's really important to, to care about marketing, to care about the community, to be uh, warm and welcoming uh, with people interested into the project and to take care to the bug reports and the pull requests and all these kind of things. Um, the, the next one is meet in person, and that's basically what we are doing uh, today. Uh, collaboration is really hard, and online collaboration is even harder. It's really difficult to communicate when you disagree on something by email, because you don't have the, the feelings, you don't have the face of the, the person in front of you. And if you think about it, when you discuss with someone on your face, you have thousands of signals that you don't have behind your screen. So if you have the opportunity to meet the people in life, in, away from people, that's really good. It really helps a lot, and I think again at the first day of event, we had it clearly boosted uh, everything. And the last one, and maybe that's the most important one, <coughs> you have to kill the ego. And I mean by that, that you are not your code. If you think about all the code you have written, I am sure you can spot many situations where you look back at your code a couple of months later and, and thought it's, it's ugly. Why did I want what, what did I want that? that that's really but it's okay, it's normal. The code is the view you have to solve a solution in a given time and it will evolve through time with you, with your views, with your new ideas, with your new learnings. So it's perfectly okay to accept to get distance from the code and to remove it. I think the best sign is when you start to remove code. It means the project leaves. And the other view of that, of kill the ego, is don't be a broker. Step back from the project when you feel it will help the project. And uh, I'm really happy again to say, I'm going to say that again, but I'm really happy to see the project leaving without me leaving uh, around. That's very, uh, very satisfying to see. And uh, that's what. That's what I would say. So, at the conclusion, and thanks for your time, I'm a little, little bit late. I think the conclusion is dancing is fun. And I won't do more here, but that is a uh, uh, word uh, cloud of the uh, testimonials we have on the website. And uh, if you look at the big words, it's, it really speaks for itself. Uh, simple, awesome, uh, quick, uh, nice, excellent, etc. Lightweight. So, that's the feeling people have when they try to use that stuff. And I think that's really, really interesting to see. So, uh, as a last word, I'd like uh, to say that uh, I'm really honored to be here today. Uh, as I said in the beginning, uh, Dancer started six years ago, and it's really, uh, I'm really honored to be here today. Uh, it's a very strange feeling. And uh, I'd like to thank all of you to be there today uh, for the attention you give to Dancer or for the time you give to Dancer for all the new core developers also a big thank you and, uh, and yes, thanks for using Dancer and for your time. Thank you.